So Flo Flowboard is a new kind of uh, presentation software, uh, and they're here to talk about both that and also why they switched to Rackspace. We're going to talk about presentation software right now. Who are you? Hi, I'm Brent Brookler, co-founder and CEO of Flowboard. I've been building uh, mobile apps and uh, mobile services for like 15 years, and Flowboard is a big thing that we've been working on and brewing up in Seattle. The Seahawks just won. There's all this positive energy brewing in Seattle, and we're taking that energy and bringing it here to talk about Flowboard. So there's a lot of competitors in this new presentation space, mm -hmm. right? The post uh, PowerPoint space, because mm -hmm. right? everybody knows about PowerPoint, but PowerPoint sucks in a whole mm -hmm. lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, things like Prezi, which mm -hmm. lets you fly around a wall, yeah. and there's a Haiku Deck, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's others that are yeah. coming. Uh, what makes you special in this in this new well, we, we're, space? We've, we came from this from my really building apps, content-driven apps space. We've built big, really big applications like 60 Minutes and and um, 48 Hours and many others. And we wanted to build a tool to allow people to make almost mini apps. And so uh, our presentation, the presentations that you make with Flowboard are really more interactive and we're really trying to evolve the presentation medium for this new world we're living in, which is a mobile first, tablet first, on the go, always connected uh, way. Yeah. And it, um, you know, when people, it's hard, you know, if, if you're stuck on PowerPoint, mm -hmm. it's hard to uh, get into this new world. Right. What's going to get people off of PowerPoint and into this new world yeah. where you are really doing things a lot more on tablets? Uh -huh. Well, we're seeing the most traction right now in actually schools where kids are given iPads mm -hmm. and they need to create on iPads. And some of this other software, it just isn't there. So immediately on kids who are growing into and are more digital and touch native, they're just flocking to this. To go and get the more traditional PowerPoint or Keynote users, what we're doing actually is building a Mac version of our software. And it's, it's rethought, it's like, like we're talking about, it's modern, it's still coming from this. You're building a touch publishing, a touch experience, like a mini app experience, but now you're gonna be able to author it on the desktop, and we think that's going to bring more people over. Can we see what it looks like and uh, walk us through a little bit about sure. what makes it different than uh, PowerPoint or different from Prezi or whatnot? Well, uh, I mean, here's the here's the iPad app, and I, I grabbed a couple photos from the other day. Uh, this was the part of the uh, the uh, makeshift parade that happened on Sunday night after the Seahawks won. Mm -hmm. That's actually our office, and that's first and yester down in downtown uh, downtown Seattle. Here's another advantage. I went up into the office and looked down at all the people. Um, what's great about Flowboard is that's the, in the in the viewer. You have these controls. It's it's really made for for touch. So uh, you do it a two tap. I create an object, then you drop content onto that object. Yeah. You can grab text, images, videos, etc. So I grab an image, you have all these different uh, sources. Here, here's uh, stuff coming out of uh, Dropbox, which I recently just brought a bunch of my photos in there. Um, once these load, I can quickly... Just grab one that you yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. And draws it. And the other thing that's really cool about it, we built in interactivity, and this is a really important piece. So see the link button right there? Yep. I can make that into a link, a link to a website, a link to a screen, and boom, now it's gonna give me other choices so I can make this link go back to the front page. And then when I go into uh, play mode, now that's a link. Yep. Um, and links and having this more interactive is, is really the, the cornerstone of what makes a flow board flow. Uh, for example, I was looking at uh, this Macklemore one we made the, the other day. It just shows videos from Macklemore. And these are all YouTube videos and it, you just jump right in. And so it's, it's more interactive, it's more multimedia driven, it's just a cleaner experience. And we think the, the, it, the, the way you create them is so simple, that's why we're getting all these kids to use it because yep. they're intimidated by the, the interfaces of, of PowerPoint. And I feel some of these other, other presentation software are really complicated to use. Yeah, 
Uh, is this a free app? How do you guys get paid? So the, uh, the iPad app is free and there is a premium subscription. And we're about to launch a new version in a few weeks that's gonna also have some premium templates. You can create things from templates or you can do, do things from scratch. And then the Mac app, which is not out yet, it's gonna come out in, we think, April. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be uh, a paid app. Okay. And we're, th we're thinking the price of being about, about $10. Again, this is all uh, thought from, uh, the, you know, rethought from the ground up, and this is an early look. This is not finished, but again, we've we've taken it, making it really simple for anyone to to use, and it, it's this is like real des desktop software, but it's come from this angle. One thing that's also to note is uh, this isn't published yet, but it's URL driven. So I can I can open up this that I made here. And open it up and edit it here, and then when you when you publish it, you publish a URL, a link, and that's why we're seeing so much growth because people are publishing these things and sharing them on yeah. Twitter, on Facebook, embedding them on blogs now, and uh, and just more and more traffic is coming in. And we're seeing a lot of use in schools, but also people are building portfolios or people are doing you know typical small, mid size and business presentations. Now, do you do you let people convert back to PowerPoint or back to Keynote? We uh, we don't yet, but in the new version that's coming out, we're going to do export to a PDF first. That's our first export out. Uh, okay. We've really liked the idea of building this uh, you know, URL driven or web driven um, presentations. So the PDF will let you look at it offline too. Yeah. The, the this all this work. all works offline. That's one of like our key tenets of everything, and that's part of the reason why we could have built a web app to do this kind of maybe. But we love offline. We think it's fundamental for especially presentation software. Yeah. You can't be online at every point, especially. A lot of times when you're giving a really big presentation, like in front of a you know, keynote or something, at a, a big event, you're gonna have bad Wi-Fi, probably. And so you want everything to work. And, and also, since we support video, YouTube videos aren't gonna work offline because they're streaming, but our videos, we have our own video system, they will always work offline. And, it, and that's something that we just believe in is a fundamental tenet of what we've built with uh, Flowboard. That's cool. Yeah. Um, you guys uh, just, uh, we usually don't talk, talk about hosting, but you yeah. just switched to Rackspace, right? Yeah, so we've, we've been, uh, we actually, before we launched this, we had some of our, we're like old school. We had like our own cabinet. And we decided to make the move to, uh, to go cloud for, everyone knows why the cloud is, is better, just the pure cloud reasons. But we picked uh, Rackspace over, or Seattle based, over this other company in Seattle for a number of few reasons, and I think it was yeah, really- Yeah, you got Amazon in your backyard. Why did you pick Rackspace? Um, you know, it was, it was really, it wasn't necessarily my decision. It was our, our director of platform, uh, Daniel Searles, and, and together we kind of made the decision. But basically we looked at, what really drove it is probably, the first thing was OpenStack and not being locked in. And so potentially, if we want to move off later, you know, we get massive, and then a lot of people move off cloud services yep. when they get really big. Yeah, Facebook is not on the cloud, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of these companies, there's a, there, Another company in Seattle just made a big point how they moved a lot of their stuff off uh, of cloud services because at a certain point, at, at scale, you need to have your own systems. Anyway, so OpenStack, if we move off, we can go and build our own system using that same open platform. We thought also the pricing uh, was easier to comprehend and plan and predict and forecast than uh, others. And then, uh, and then we also uh, liked that in, in, the, in part of that planning of, of building, is a simpler architecture to uh, digest and learn. And there was some, you know, you have to learn it somehow. But again, it goes back to being open, open stack, then you could take that learning and use it uh, forward. And yeah. then we did like the, the service, the customer service and the commitment to customer service that might have been the, uh, the clincher. So yeah. we've been really happy. We've had not many issues at all. Very and cool. some of them probably our own issues, but it's been really solid and, and essentially one there's guy. Always yeah, there's always issues. Yeah, there's always issues, but you know, like uh, essentially one guy has been able to manage this. Yeah, so, very, very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for being a customer. Um, tell me, uh, we did a previous interview with yeah. you uh, where we haven't seen the Mac version yeah. yet. Mac version is coming in, in yeah. April. Are you thinking of Windows as well? Uh, we go back and forth on Windows. Uh, we think there's, a, there's potential there. We're also thinking about other, other big platforms. And, you know, we like the Mac because it's, 
really good synergy, obviously, from the iPad. And a lot of people still want to do work when they're in work mode in front of, they want to do it here, yeah. right? So we may think, we may go back towards uh, mobile and maybe it's an iPhone version or maybe it's an Android version, maybe it's an Android uh, tablet or phablet version. So we're, we're open to everything, but what's most important for us is to continue to make this a great experience and then make this an amazing experience. And so that's, we, we can't, we're not a huge team, so we just need to get these things right and yeah. then we go on to the next uh, platform. But I believe in being everywhere. Like you have to be ubiquitous. Are there any other fundamental differences between you and let's say Keynote or, or most people are familiar with PowerPoint. I, mm -hmm. I use Keynote mm -hmm. uh, partly because the offline, so mm -hmm. the offline capabilities are yeah. interesting here. Um, but are there other, do you give me a better type handling or anything crazy like that? Um, I think w uh, there are a couple of things that makes it different than Keynote. We also, we have these templates. Uh, the Keynote, you have to go out to you know, go find templates. So we're having all these built-in templates right from day one. I think our video support is way better. Um, there's challenges, especially recently, uh, adding video to Keynotes and then sharing them and collaborating they don't really work. Um, we also just, com we're coming to this from a fundamentally different way of looking at it. This, this is built as a tablet first and a you know open web based tool and so you're publishing to a URL and that's just fundamental in keynote they try to push you into say send it as a pdf send it as a powerpoint send it as this no you send it as a URL cuz that's how actually how people consume content now yeah and so uh, and then also the interactivity and uh, and our, our interface and the, it is just simpler to use and keynote is pretty simple to use but ours is even simpler and yet more powerful yeah uh, tell me what's happening with the company. Uh, the, uh, how have you been funded and how, how many people are working there? There's uh, 11 of us up in Seattle, uh, mostly on the de development uh, team. We've uh, just finished off, we're just finishing off a bridge and we're going to go out looking for a bigger round uh, shortly after the, the Mac app launches. Very so cool. It's exciting stuff. I mean, we've, uh, we're just growing and growing. It's all word of mouth, um, organic no advertising at all, which is pretty awesome. It's, it's really great also to see how much we're getting this uh, adoption in schools. And it just, it's good to be a part of, you know, educating and having yeah. kids using this as a creative tool to. Uh, if you build on the school market, um, a lot of schools have iPads, uh -huh. but a lot of them are now uh, starting to switch to either Chromebooks or uh, Android tablets, so. Watch that, that. Yeah. watch that. No, I, I've been reading about the Chrome. Uh, you know, it's hard to compete with $250 for, yeah. for a, uh, a, a Chromebook. Yeah. A Chromebook. Yeah. So there's uh, some interesting stats. You probably saw the same ones that I did showing that like they all of a sudden got like 20% of these new new sales. Yep. But then there's also some uh, some news last week uh, or uh, about Obama and Apple giving $100 million in, in iPads. And so... I don't think iPads. No, going I don't think I, iPads going away. Yeah, it's just yeah. um, I, I, I just went to an education conference and talked to a lot of superintendents. And they're like, "Hey, Chromebooks." Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and also I, I Android agree. tablets are yeah. two hundred dollars. My uh, uh, my sister in law is a teacher, and she can't afford five hundred dollar tablets. You know, no. and this one's three hundred thirty. Yeah. But yeah. You can buy a two hundred dollar Android tablet that's just just fine for a lot of the classroom capabilities. That's so why we're thinking because before yeah. we go to Windows, it's probably an Android world. But yeah. we're not going to fully commit to doing that because we really want to focus on these, get these two right, and then we can go to the next to the next platform. It's just the way we have to do it. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, flowboard.com, uh, or you can find us on Twitter or uh, Facebook. Yep. Uh, and it's an exciting time. It's a total blast to build this and touch a lot well, of people. Well, thanks for coming down from uh, Seattle and showing us the latest stuff. Uh, I'm excited about the Mac because a lot of people still give presentations on the Mac even if they uh, right. have right. aspirations to do, yeah. doing, you know, doing the creative work on a tablet. Exactly, we, and we love the fact that you're gonna be able to create it here, and then edit it here, and because the the suite, the create, creation was built here, it's not gonna be an afterthought and like kind of like a fub, fubbled kind of editing system. It was made here and brought to here, and the having you create here, you finish here, you start here, you finish there, and that's we think it's gonna be really powerful. Right, cool. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks, thanks for having me.